Um, I, I, I believe that uh, the, the dose, the final effective dose, has a lot to do with the fact that the design, that the flexible, the design used a flexible dosing. Whenever you use in this kind of studies flexible dosing, you tend to to push up the final effective dose. So I think in future studies, if they use fixed dose approaches, and that's probably what will need to be done in the future, probably the mean effective dose will be somewhat lower. Um, when we looked, one of the main surprises came when we looked into, into the sleep studies. There we found two main things. First of all, um, as I said, we had seen through the rating scales at patients that there was an improvement in, in sensory symptoms. However, when we looked into the sleep studies, we found something additional. Um, pregabalin not only influenced the sensory symptoms of restless legs, but it improved also the motor symptoms, which was uh, something more of, of, of higher interest because you would assume being a drug that uh, influences, uh, that, 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 that is being used for neuropathic pain, that the effects of pregabalin could be mainly on the sensory system. No, not only that, they were also effective on the motor f symptoms. But the main thing, and uh, in, in, in my view, the, the main factor that differentiates here pregabalin from any previous drugs is the fact that there was a quasi-complete normalization of sleep. Um, when you use dopaminergics to treat restless legs, the most you achieve, and that can be seen on any other drugs, the most you will achieve will be an improvement of periodic leg movements of the motor dysfunction, but you won't be able to normalize sleep architecture. With pregabalin, we nearly achieved that. There was an increase in slow wave sleep. Patients were able to sleep following three weeks of, uh, following 12 weeks of treatment, they were able to sleep a mean of 30 minutes of slow wave sleep more, not just of sleep, of slow wave sleep. That's the part of sleep that you need, uh, well, it's a particularly important part of the, of, of, of the architecture of sleep. You need it to feel, well, we can talk a lot about the function of slow wave sleep, but you need it to feel rested in the morning. It's a marker of normalization of sleep architecture. Let's leave it that way. Um, what about uh, tolerating uh, pregabalin? In general, the drug was well tolerated. I have added a list of side effects, and in fact, the only side effect that proved to be more common under pregabalin than under placebo uh, was unsteadiness, um, which is a known um, side effect during treatment with pregabalin. So um, taken together, what you can say here is that the drug is effective to treat both sensory and motor symptoms of restless legs, that the drug is particularly good at leading to remission, as a big percentage of patients are able to achieve remission under this drug, that the drug is particularly effective at uh, normalizing sleep, and, but this is something that will have to be seen in the future, but that's my guess, that the drug will do better on the long term than dopaminergics. This is nothing that we investigated because the study was just a 12-week uh, a, a, a trial. But I can imagine from the, just, from the from the, just out of the mechanism of action of the drug that over the long term, the um, restless legs augmentation that is so frequently being seen under dopaminergics won't be seen under, pro, 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 under pregabalin. This is my guess. Um, and so far, the introduction. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Garcia Borghero.